Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech number 246, looking at speculation and investment for November 2015. Got a lot of cards on here. We've had a lot of major events going on. Let's jump right in. First thing I want to look at is this cool Protean Hulk deck list that did well out at uh, the GP. Very interesting deck. It really takes two cards that we haven't seen a lot of in modern and has spiked them. Wizards of the Coast has some decent event coverage of the Pittsburgh GP with this particular deck highlighted. Uh, it is a cool deck and it shows what people can really do while brewing in the format. This is a deck people have known about for a while. I played against it in a GP trial um, a few months ago and it's got a lot of power. What I really like about it is the Faithless Lootings in there. It lets you cycle through really quickly, and it's more consistent than people really understand. Pact of Negation is really, really powerful in this deck, and this is the type of edge deck that you really want to look out for and try to find cards that are in a deck like this so that long term when a deck does well you have those cards to be able to trade away and trade into other cards you need. Rise and Fall has also been rising at this point. It has went up about four to five times in value. It is seeing play again in Modern. Modern is the new driving force for long term financial value. Two, three years ago I would have said Legacy, but now it's clearly modern and as cards like this get discovered by deck brewers the cards have just been shooting through the roof now would i speculate on a bunch of rise and falls at this point no i think it has really just settled at its new reasonable price most of the uncommons that are playable tend to range between the two dollar range and twelve dollars given the heavy color requirements on this card the $2 you see it at seems to be right for it. I would just look through your collection, see if you have any extras. Now is a decent time to trade them. We're back to Jace this week, and Jace has been holding value. He's been slightly dropping over the last month. The regular Jaces are down about $15 from a month ago, and most of the foil versions are holding the same. The San Diego Comic-Con version, I have not found very many people willing to trade these away. At the GP here in Seattle, there were virtually none in the cases, and lots of people I know looking for them. Even though the prices went down slightly, I still have it as a buy at this point. Long-term, Jace is a powerhouse in every format out there. I would sell off the regular ones. They will drop when he rotates out of standard, but the premier versions have long-term value to them. Reiterate, just jumped through the roof. It's $40. Not sure why. Well, Commander, it's playable with one of the Commander decks. This is a classic buyout. Avoid it like the plague. If you have it, sell it now. It'll drop down to the $5 to $10 range again in a few months. This is not seeing heavy play in Modern. Yes, it's a cool card, but it's not a broken card by any means. It's just subject of a buyout. Monastery Mentor is still rather reasonable at this point. He's seeing play in pretty much every format out there. $16 is very reasonable for this long-term Eternal card. I would hold on to them or buy them at their current value. Colgan's Command continues to slowly but surely rise. This is a buy for me at the $10 to $12 range, and it's still a buy for me at the $15 range. With the foils, anywhere around double that is very, very reasonable. Robots. This is a deck that I believe is going to shoot through the roof with the next modern season coming up. Consistently performs well. It's the type of deck that somebody can get into pretty easily and do well at a Pro Tour pre-trial, one of the regional trials. Just do really well and then make it to regionals. It's a pretty skill-intensive deck overall. It does get some free wins. I would watch for cards like I would watch for cards like Blink Moth Nexus and Mox Opal to shoot up. Well, Arcbound Ravenger is just going to become liquid cash and golden to trade. We've got something really interesting happening here in EDH. The new commander sets came out, and there were no legacy cards in them, which means that they're actually selling at retail. But the commander cards from them are selling much higher than they normally would. If there had been a bunch of legacy cards in these sets, 
the cards that are not playable in Legacy have tended to tank in price, and you could get the Commander-specific cards for really, really inexpensive. But since a lot less of these are being opened, the Commander cards themselves are going up in value. Command Beacon, the new Blade over here, and Mystic Confluence are trading really well, and long-term have the potential to hold and steadily move up in value. Unless there's a huge number of these decks that get discounted through a big box retailer, I see these prices just continuing to go up slowly but surely over time. I would trade into these staples now. They're not going to bottom out the way that they have in the past. Also, look for any cards that are in these decks that are clearly modern stars. Eternal Witness could easily double or triple when we get to modern season coming up here at the beginning of the year. The commanders in this set are going to have long-term value to them. Also, most of the early commanders have slowly and steadily went up. Any of those with edge playability in modern could shoot up at any point. I'm recommending that people buy both Marin and Karlov right now. For other EDH cards to look at, I would start picking up Insurrections. They're reasonably priced and slowly moving up. Ghostly Prison is seeing play in modern and in EDH. Phyrexian Arena is at a low because of this Commander print, and Reliquary Tower is extremely low right now. It's very, very easy to trade. I can see it back up at the 4 or $5 range in a year. Glimmer Void has started to take off, and I don't think it's seen its ceiling yet. This is one of those pieces in robots that everybody is going to want, and mana bases tend to be more expensive than the staple cards. Legacy's got some interesting things going on. I really like the Punishing Asban deck that Tom Keating played at the Star City Games Legacy Open for Chalice of the Void's main deck for Dark Confidant's main deck. This is just a really cool deck with a Life from the Loam Engine. Look through this deck, see what you can pull out as underpriced cards. The two that jump out to me is Dark Confidant's at an all-time low, clearly worth picking up at that $35 range that he's at currently. And Gaddick Teague has never really shot up in price. He was a $5 card for a long time. He's hovering around the $12 range. I really like him. And for an outside pick, Garruk the Relentless, Foils of Garruk, if he's playable in Modern or in Legacy, will eventually shoot up. I really like the Garruk in there. He has some really nice board control aspects to him. Ugin the Spirit Dragon is up 50% in value since last month. Don't sell him out. He hasn't hit his top yet. I hate telling people to buy a Mythic at 45 that is still in standard, but if there is one to buy, this is clearly it. Mentor, as I mentioned earlier, a solid buy. Sarah Sanctum has started to take off in price, and long term, this is one that just won't come back down. It's an EDH favorite that does see play in Enchantress in Legacy, great card on the reserve list. And Green Sun Zenith is seeing some play in Legacy and is an all-star in EDH. It was heavily, heavily printed because it was in one of the From the Vaults. I can see it going back up over time and being a $10 or $12 card. Quiet Speculation added a new feature to their site, or at least new to me, that's really, really interesting to me. Um, I don't actually know anybody out of Quiet Speculation. I hear that they may be behind some of the buyouts, which I'm not a fan of the buyouts generally, but these guys are smart and know what they're doing when they're talking about magic finance. Buy lists are more important than offers to sell. Let me say that one more time. Buy list pricing is more important than offers to sell. Cards go up really quickly on the offer to sell side and they drop down really, really slow. The opposite is true of buy lists. Buy list cards drop really quickly on buy list because stores know when people are just offloading lots of them. And buy list prices go up a little bit slower because you're dealing with real cash liquidity here. This is something that people should be checking out occasionally to see what is actually in demand. And seeing cards like Blood Moon, Polluted Delta, Arcbound Ravager, Rishadon Port start to move up on those buy lists is very interesting. A lot of this is driven by Modern and Legacy. Both those formats are looking very healthy right now. now the old school format, 
or just old cards in general, continue to trend upwards long term. These are solid investments. City of Brass is up something like 50% in the original printing. City in a Bottle is up. Even obscure cards like Drop of Honey are up because of the old school format. And the old Arabian Nights Mountains are pretty tough to find at this point. Everybody looks at them in my binder. When they figure out how much they are, it usually takes them a few days to come back and then make real offers on them. Any of these really, really small print run older cards, they have a lot of liquidity to them currently, and they continue to go up in price. Someone asked recently whether it's worth picking up sets. With some of these older cards, it definitely is. One or two cards in the set will end up spiking. It makes up for the other cards that you end up picking up in a complete set. And long term, all of the cards have been slowly going up in those first expansion sets. I think I'm going to do a video that focuses on older sets in particular coming up probably January or so. Two cards that I think are way too low right now and should definitely be buys are Toxic Deluge, it's seen play in Legacy, and it is a very powerful card in Commander. And Sphinx's Revelation, this was a $20, $30 card when it was a powerhouse in Standard, and at any moment it could break out in Modern and double or triple in price. I'm investing in both of these. You at least pick up your play sets now. You don't want to be left out when trying to build a deck and they're double or triple the price. I could see Toxic Deluge up there in the same category as Damnation until we see a Judge Foil or it in the next conspiracy type product. Uncommons are one of the best ways to invest in magic. Your buy-in price is pretty low. Boros Charm, I originally bought in at about a dollar a piece. They're up to five and I'm still trading for them. Destructive Revelry is another really solid one that's at a quarter currently. It's a great modern sideboard card and the foils are only five dollars. If you can pick these up at that $5 range, you're going to be really happy when people are trying to foil out their modern decks and they double or triple in price. What uncommons do you think are currently undervalued? It's one of the tougher things is to look through some of the uncommon lists and find those that are maybe undervalued currently but are seeing play, especially for the foil versions. With regards to commons, I've got a few here that I think are still underpriced for their uh, current playability, especially in modern. Deprive is a solid counterspell that is seeing play in those very low casting costs, kind of delve control decks. A hard counter at two casting cost is really powerful. Bathos Looting is surprisingly only 33 cents. Yes, it was printed in Commander. It is a great card. I would definitely pick up regular and foil Faithless Lootings. Uh, Simeon Spirit Guide is another great one that the really fast combo decks really need the mana acceleration. It's playable in pretty much every format in combo decks. At $4, it is a great common that is very easy to trade. Out of all three of these, the Spirit Guide probably has the least growth. Both Deprive and Faithless Looting could double or triple overnight. Now's the time to pick up Expeditions. I'm specifically picking up the Blue Expeditions. They've started to go up in price. Dealers are starting to sell out of them online. They've stopped crashing. If you don't pick these up now, they're going to be really, really tough in the future to pick up. Thank you guys here. We've got some great videos coming up. I've got an Ask Anything for the 10,000 subscribers. I'm going to be doing some commentary over at Mox Morning House, turning that into videos launching a new site around improving magic that I'm going to talk about some, and then I'm redoing my top 10 black EDH cards list. If you've got any suggestions for that EDH list, especially cards from the last three months, please leave them in the comments. For more suggestions on finding the true spirit of the cards, subscribe to Mythic MTG Tech. Thank you to everybody who's over there on Patreon supporting the channel. I greatly appreciate it.